सो फ्रेंड्स इन आवर एम यू क्लास ओरल्स दे आर सम क्वेश्चन आस्ट ऑन द टॉपिक कॉल्ड एयर कंप्रेसर सो आई हैव ट्राई टू कवर ऑल द क्वेश्चन सो द क्वेश्चन आर एज फॉलोज टाइप्स एंड यूज ऑफ एयर कंप्रेसर रेगुलेशन ऑफ एयर कंप्रेसर वाई वी आर नॉट यूजिंग सिंगल स्टेज एयर कंप्रेसर बेनिफिट्स ऑफ मल्टी स्टेज एयर कंप्रेसर वॉट इज वोलीमेट्रिक एफिशेंसी वॉट इज बम्पिंग क्लियरेंस एंड वॉट चेंजेस इट वॉट इज सिग्निफिकेंस ऑफ बम्पिंग क्लियरेंस how to check bumping clearance and how to adjust bumping clearance and friends this is my air compressor part 1 video so the video was going long that's why i have divided the questions into two parts so now moving towards our air compressor part 1 video so this question is asked as uh, tell me the types of air compressor so basically there are four types of air compressor centrifugal rotary vane rotary screw and reciprocating compressor so basically on our ships we are having reciprocating compressor so this is some basic thing which is asked in our md orals and we are not easily able to remember it whenever we are asked now moving towards our second question uses of compressed air so this is a basic question which everyone knows about it so i will skip this question now moving towards our next one regulations of air compressor two starting compressors must be fitted of sufficient total capacity to meet the engine requirement so basically there should be two independent starting air compressors should be fitted on our ship so that they can meet the engine requirements each compressor must be able to press up air receiver from 15 bars to 25 bars in 30 minutes two air receivers must be provided so this regulation tells that uh, there should be compressor so a single compressor should press up around 15 bar to 35 bar in around 30 minutes in the air bottles provided and there should be two air bottles so now moving towards our last regulation total air receiver capacity is to be sufficient for 12 starts for reversible engines and six starts for non reversible engines so the capacity should be sufficient for 12 starts for the reversible and six start for the non reversible engines so these were the regulations of our air compressor and this is mostly asked in our empty oral so please prepare this so now moving towards our next one why we are not using single stage compressors so friends as you know that in our single stage compressors we are not having intercooler or aftercooler but in our multi stage compressors we are having intercooler and aftercooler that's why the temperature of the air is low but here in single stage compressor the temperature is high so what is the effect of high temperatures as the delivery pressure increases the delivery air temperature also increases so lubricating oil may vaporize at high temperature resulting in carbonization and oil breakdown deposit on valves causing sluggish valve operation so due to this high temperature the lubricating oil will vaporize and it will start depositing on the valves so because of this the operation of the valve will be sluggish and at extremely high temperature there is a risk of fire and explosion and if the temperature is high there may be a chance of fire and explosion also can take place mechanical problems may arise at high temperatures energy loss will be there so hope you got an idea that why we are not using single stage air compressors because the delivery air temperature is very high so in place of that we are using multi stage compressor so what is the effect of two stage with intercooling so the intake of air in the first stage gets compressed and then it is passed over a cooler to achieve a temperature very close to ambient air this cooled air is passed to the second stage where it is again gets compressed and cooled so in this two stage intercooling the first air is compressed due to which the temperature of the air increases then it is passed through a intercooler which is placed between first stage and second stage when the air is passed through it the temperature of the air decreases and it is same as the atmospheric air the ambient air then it is again compressed by the second stage and then it is passed through the aftercooler which is placed after the second stage so due to this intercooler and aftercooler two stage intercooling system the temperature of the air is not high whereas in our single stage compressor the temperature of the air at the discharge is high so this is the reason we are using this two stage intercooler on our ships so because of this process the cycle approaches the ideal isothermal compression to achieve maximum volumetric efficiency so hope you got an basic idea that why we are not using single stage compressor and why we are using this multi stage compressor in our orals there is one question asked that what is volumetric efficiency of a compressor so it is the measure to know that what is the volume handling capacity of the compressor 
and it is represented as ratio of actual volume of air sucked to the swept volume of the cylinder so basically the swept volume is the piston traveling distance from ttc to btc and some places volumetric efficiency is given as volume of air discharge as free air to the swept volume of low pressure piston here you can see the free air is the air at the atmospheric pressure and the temperature is 15 degree centigrade and swept volume is the volume through which a piston or a plunger moves as it meets the stroke so this is what volumetric efficiency is so in the graph you can see that how much work is saved by using this two stage compressor with intercooling sometimes surveyor ask that what is the benefit of multi stage compression why we are using this multi stage compressor why we are not using that single stage compressor so at that time you have to tell about all these points that our efficiency is improved so the lower temperature is there less moisture build up is there and the compressor is of a smaller size and there is one disadvantage also the cost of this compressor is high so now i will not explain these points in detail because i have already explained you in my previous slides because this video is going to be long that's why i am moving towards my next question bumping clearance so friend this is very important topic of the air compressor topic so bumping clearance is the distance between the cylinder head and the piston at top dead center that is ttc so in the figure it is clear that the bumping clearance is shown between the head and the top of the piston so this is the bumping clearance usually it is between 0.5 percent to 1 percent of the core of the cylinder so sometimes sir we ask you that uh, what will happen if bumping clearance is less so it may result in piston banging or colliding to the cylinder head especially in unloaded condition so if bumping clearance is less this means that the piston when it is at tdc and the cylinder head the distance between both is very less so that's why at the unloaded condition there is a chance that it may bang or collide to the cylinder head so now another question arises that what will happen if bumping clearance is more so if bumping clearance is more a small volume of air being re-expanded every time causing increase in air temperature, fall in efficiency and overheating of compressor reduces the amount of air delivered per stroke. So friends, you can imagine that uh, when the piston is rating at TTC, so the space between the cylinder head and the TTC is more. So the amount of air which we were delivering to the second stage earlier will be not delivered to second stage because it will store in that space. So this will again re-expand and due to which the temperature will increase and the efficiency will also drop and because of this the amount of air which we are delivering earlier will be not delivered to the second stage and due to which the volumetric efficiency will be less and we have to run the compressor more so once you will tell the answer about this more and less so the surveyor will ask you one more cross question why bumping clearance can change so when the compressor is new so there is a set distance set clearance is there at the time when it is new so whenever we are using so it keeps on changing over time there are three reasons due to which this pumping clearance changes so the first is wear at the crank pin bearing second is opening up of cylinder heads and the third one is wear on the main bearing so friends wear at the crank pin bearing and the wear on the main bearing is due to the usage of the compressor but this opening of the cylinder head leads to the change in pumping clearance because whenever we are boxing back the air compressor we should put the correct size thickness of this cylinder head gasket if we are changing the thickness of this cylinder head gasket it will lead to the change in the pumping clearance so friends these were the three things by which the pumping clearance change over time so one more question is asked about this pumping clearance that what is significance and effect of pumping clearance so in an air compressor when the discharge valve closes in the end of compression cycle a small amount of high pressure air is trapped in the clearance volume so you can imagine that uh, when this compression cycle is at the end so small amount of high pressure air is always trapped in that bumping clearance space so that is known as the clearance volume so before again taking suction the air trapped in the clearance volume must expand below the suction pressure that is below the atmospheric pressure so this point explains that the air which was trapped in that clearance volume it will expand again whenever the suction stroke will take place so the expansion of this trapped air in the clearance volume causes 
effective loss of storm due to which the volumetric efficiency of compressor drops therefore the clearance volume has a significant effect on the efficiency of the compressor so in simple words the significance of bumping clearance is that uh, it should be not very less or it should be not more because if it is less so there is a chance that uh, the piston may bang the cylinder head and if it is more so the air which is trapped inside will re-expand and due to which the volumetric efficiency will be dropped so this is what the significance is and this is the effect of the bumping clearance of the clearance volume now hope you are clear with the significance and the effect of this clearance volume so now moving towards our next one so whatever i have covered in this video all the questions are very important as per the mep overall so checking bumping clearance so the surveyor will ask you how you will check the bumping clearance so the method which i am going to tell you is very convenient very easy method it is to take lead wire and make a small ball and put it between the piston and the cylinder head from the valve opening so you can imagine that uh, we will take a lead wire ball and we will put it between the piston and the cylinder head then the piston is slowly turned beyond the ttc so that lead ball is compressed by the piston so now we will move the piston towards tdc so because of this this lead wire ball will be compressed because it will be in between cylinder head and piston that's why it will compress so we will now lead wire ball is extracted and the thickness measured with the help of micrometer this measurement would give the bumping clearance so in a simple words i will summarize the whole method that first we will take a lead wire ball and we will put it between the cylinder head and the piston from the valve opening after that we will rotate the compressor with the help of flywheel and due to which this piston will move toward tdc and this ball will be compressed so now we will take out this lead wire ball and we will measure it with the help of micrometer and the thickness of this lead wire ball is the bumping clearance of the air compressor and we can also check the bumping clearance with the help of depth gauge so friends this is what you have to tell whenever the surveyor is asking you about how will you check the bumping clearance so now moving towards our next one so sometimes the surveyor asks a question that how will you adjust the bumping clearance so for adjusting the bumping clearance the wear down on the bottom end bearing will be on the top half due to the downward load so adjusting the bottom end bearing clearance will have no effect of the bumping clearance so there will be no effect if we are adjusting the bottom end bearing because due to the downward load the wear down is always on the top of the bottom end bearing so for adjusting the bumping clearance we can use shims between the connecting rod and the bottom end bearing or by changing the thickness of the cylinder head gasket so in the figure you can see that we are adjusting the shims at the top of the bottom end bearing so it is given by the color purple color as you can see it is given by the purple color so we can use the shims so sometimes the surveyor is not accepting this shims method so we can say that the bumping clearance can be adjusted with the help of this thickness of the cylinder head gasket we can increase the thickness or we can decrease the thickness as per the bumping clearance so hope friends you got a basic idea about all the questions which i have covered in this video so this video is going long that's why i will cover all the topics in the list in my next video the air compressor part 2 so friends if this video was helpful please like and share the video and subscribe the channel marine helpport